Welcome to part one of AWS Solutions Architect Associate Practice Exam question. People don't just pass from my videos, instead they pass with flying colors, which is well evident in the comment section of my previous videos. Before embarking into this course, I would highly recommend you to go through my AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Practice Exam question, even if you pass the exam, because it will help you build up the concepts. All right, in real world exam, you will always get some long questions like this. You got to read the questions carefully and mark the keywords just like me to understand the requirement of the question and so as to arrive at the correct answer finally. Let's look at option B that is Amazon S3. S3 is never meant for key management right since it's a storage service hence it's an incorrect choice. Let's look at option D now that is artifact. If you read the question it's not asking about compliance related information instead it's about key management since artifact contains security and compliance reports it's again an incorrect choice let's look at option a now that is aws secrets manager secrets manager is used to store secrets for authentication and not encryption also the question says that hsm contains encryption keys and not passwords for database or other AWS services, which AWS KMS can only provide that brings up to the answer. If you look at the official documentation as well, it's written and you can go through this, the entire documentation, the key material for KMS key is generated within HSM managed by AWS KMS and hence will log C as the correct answer. All right, this question seems interesting as it's related to performance. Let's look at option C and D together as per the question, there is no mention to increase the ability or achieve high ability. We instead need to optimize the application performance, which perhaps read replicas are meant for. Since multi AZ deployments are associated with high ability, hence this is an incorrect choice since we don't have the requirement for now. Let's look at option B now. There is no reason to provision double the storage and compute resources as this will increase the cost unnecessarily which depicts a poor architecture design hence this is again an incorrect choice we are left out with a and hence we'll log this all right this question is related to dynamo db you got to be familiar about the concepts let's look at option a now multi az replication is meant to achieve high ability multi az won't help in variable predictable workload throughout the day as mentioned here hence this is an incorrect choice let's look at option c now that is dynamodb accelerator or dax for data caching dax works for read intensive application like cache since application has read write workloads as mentioned in the question dax will not work and c is incorrect choice let's now look at option b that is activate dynamodb on on demand capacity allocation during table creation dynamodb on demand is meant for unpredictable traffic especially though it will still work but is not the best solution when compared to auto scaling as per the question there's a clear mention of predictable workloads here right Hence, this is an incorrect choice, we'll reject this. And if you look at the official documentation, it's clearly mentioned that for predictable application traffic, you need to specify the number of reads and writes per second and that required application. You can also use auto scaling to adjust your table provision capacity automatically in response to traffic changes. That's what is required and hence we'll log this. All right, this question is related to migration from on-prem database to AWS cloud. Let's look at option C first, that is Amazon DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. As per the question, we need to support a MySQL database. So DynamoDB is definitely out. Let's look at option D now, that is MySQL deployed on Amazon EC2 in an auto-scaling group. If you read the keyword minimizes database adjustment it's indirectly recommend you to use a serverless architecture because in serverless architecture manual intervention by the user is minimized and hence this is an incorrect choice let's now look at option b that is amazon rds for mysql in terms of scaling the database rds cannot scale as seamlessly when compared to aurora serverless therefore option a is better than option b and hence we'll reject this and if you look at the official documentation as well, it's mentioned that Aurora serverless is an on-demand auto-scaling configuration for Amazon Aurora. It automatically starts up, shutdowns and scales capacity or down based on your application needs. And it also enables to run your database 
in cloud without managing any database capacity that is serverless and hence will lock A as the correct answer. All right, to understand this question in a nutshell, we need to transfer huge amount of data from on-prem to AWS within 27 days. Cost of storing the data should be minimized, which needs to be available for nine years. The internet connectivity is not as fast to transfer 77 terabytes of data in just 27 days. And now let's tackle this answer or the question. Let's look at option A first that is create a VPN connection. VPN connection will not work since 777 terabytes denotes a huge amount of data which is just not possible and reliable over the internet hence A is out. Let's now look at option B. If you read this Amazon S3 standard then we know that S3 standard is way too costly to store a data for 9 years and hence this option is definitely out. Let's look at option D now that is this one Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive looks perfect for long term storage to reduce the cost but the problem is with this direct connect. Even if we use direct connect it will take over 100 days to transfer about 700 terabytes of data as per the question, we have a time constraint here. We need to transfer the data from on-prem to the cloud in just 27 days. And hence, this is an again an incorrect choice. Quick tip for the exam, whenever you see transfer of huge amount of data from on-prem to the cloud, then snowball or snow family should strike in your mind. And hence, we'll log C as the correct answer. We are at question number six. Quick tip for the exam, always prefer serverless option if available in real world exam rather than manual architecture. In this question, we got to prefer Fargate over EC2 launch types. Let's look at option C and D now. Since option C and D uses EC2 instance launch types and hence this should be rejected because we need to move towards serverless architecture. Now let's look at option A. Everything seems perfect, but the problem is with this three different ability zone. If you read this highly accessible, that is, it is indirectly saying about high ability. This is nothing but a, just a distractor because by default, Fargate tasks are spread across ability zones. We do not need to explicitly deploy in three different ability zones. Hence, this is nothing but distractor. Hence, we'll reject this. And if you look at the official documentation as well, it's written by default. Fargate tasks are spread across ability zones with all other tasks. Default task placement strategies depend on whether you are running task manually or within a service. Hence, we'll lock B as the correct answer. All right, this question is related to instances. Let's look at option A and C that is burstable general purpose and compute optimized instance. These two are meant for CPU intensive workloads. Instead, we need IO throughput intensive as per the question. Hence, a and C are definitely incorrect choice. Let's look at option B now that is memory optimized instance. Memory optimized instances has no connection with IO throughput, hence therefore an incorrect choice. Quick tip for the exam, whenever you see keywords like IO throughput, then instance store should strike in your mind. And if you look at the official documentation as well, it's written storage optimized instances are designed for workloads that require high sequential read and write access to very large datasets on local storage, random IO operation per second IOPS to the application and instance storage is mentioned here and hence will log D as the correct answer. Let me explain this question in a nutshell. It's about static content and needs serverless architecture with low latency for the solution. Let's dive into the answers now. Let's see option A first that is Amazon EC2. EC2 is not serverless and hence incorrect choice because as per the question we need a serverless architecture. Let's look at option C first that is AWS Fargate. Though Fargate is serverless, but the problem is that it's compatible only with Amazon Elastic Container Service, also known as ECS, and Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS. In the options, we don't have this. Hence, we cannot use Fargate for this scenario because we need a combo of two answers and hence we'll reject this. And if you look at the official documentation as well, it's written the, for the Fargate, AWS Fargate is compatible with both Amazon ECS and EKS. This was one of the wrong answer just to clarify. And for the right answer, you got to use a combination of S3 and CloudFront. It's written 
that a match made in the cloud. You can read this, the Amazon S3 and CloudFront to store secure and deliver your static content. That's what is required, right? And hence we'll log this. All right, this question seems to be like a real life scenario question. Let's look at option C and D first. That is Amazon RDS for MySQL and Amazon DynamoDB. These two are not in-memory databases. As per the question, we need in-memory database, right? Hence, these two are out. Let's now look at option B. That is Elastic Cache for Memcached. Redis lets us create multiple replicas of a Redis primary. This allows us to scale database reads and have highly available clusters which memcached doesn't offer. Hence, this is an incorrect choice. And if you look at the official documentation and under the service of databases, we have Elastic Cache that is it's meant for in-memory caching and Elastic Cache is a fully managed in-memory caching service and is used for real-time cases and also accelerates application and database performance and hence we'll lock A as the correct answer. All right, if you are into video gaming and gaming related stuff, then this question should be interesting for you. Let's look at option A and B together. That is AWS Fargate and versus Amazon EC2 instances. Between Fargate and EC2 instances, we know that Fargate is a serverless. Therefore, we will reject option B because this is not a serverless architecture in EC2 instances and hence we'll reject and keep option A because we need two correct answer. Let's now look at option D that is use Lambda. Lambda can run up to 15 minutes per execution. As per the question, the job takes 27 minutes to finish which cannot be achieved using Lambda. Therefore, an incorrect choice. Quick tip for the exam, whenever you see keywords like real time, then Amazon Kinesis should strike in your mind. And then that definitely brings us to the next answer or the second answer that is Kinesis, that is A and C and hence we'll log this. So please, please, please don't go away. Let's meet in next part, that is part two of AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Practice Exam videos.